So how's your hunger? <laughs> Has it just begun? <laughs> We've been talking about, on Sunday mornings, hunger and thirst. We started by talking about our, our thirst for God. We talk, use Psalm 42. Lord, we thirst for you like a panting deer thirsts for a cool drink from a, a, a flowing stream. We, we thirst for God. Last week we talked about God's hunger for friendship with you. Now, we don't often think of God as being hungry, but God is hungry for relationship with you, for friendship with you. And he's gone to great lengths throughout all of history and throughout all of time to pursue you, to pursue me, to pursue relationship with you. We talked about three things that go into making a friendship. Time, conversation, and a shared activity of some type. And those things go into our relationship with God as well. In our pursuit of God, it takes time, it takes conversation with Him, it takes activity, shared activity with God, doing things with God. We talked about how God came near us in the garden and in the temple. We talked about how God came among us. He was with us as He came in Jesus and took on the form, uh, Jesus took on the form of man. And we talked about how the Holy Spirit came in us and how the Father is going to be inviting us to come and live with Him. God is hungry for relationship with you, for friendship with you. Today I want to talk to you about good company. That's the title of my message today Good Company. And just the, the, what I'm getting at, what I'm driving at in this message is that fasting puts you in good company with Jesus. Yeah. Fasting puts you in good company with Jesus. And it has a little bit of a double meaning there. Do you see what I'm doing there? So uh, first of all, uh, Jesus fasted. He himself fasted. Fasted. So when you pray, you're in good company with him. That phrase means that you're doing something that someone has already done. Usually someone respected or someone well-known. Uh, when, you, when you do something as, the same as someone else like that, you, you say, oh, you're in good company with so-and-so. And so Jesus fasted. When you fast and pray, you're in good company with Jesus. Is as, fast, uh, as hard, rather, as it is to fast, you're in good company Jesus did it. In, would you turn with me to Matthew chapter 4? And Matthew chapter 4 is where we're going to look at today, this, this passage of Scripture where we see one of the times that Jesus fasted. And it was a particularly meaningful time. It's a, a memorable time because it even goes beyond the fact that Jesus was going without food. But we're going to see what happened there on that day. So Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 then Jesus, okay, so let's just stop right there. Jesus, he is God. He is fully God, fully man. And so when, when he does something, we, we just take notice and we, we study it. We learn from him. We're his apprentices. We, we try to figure out, oh, wow, is, what's he doing? If I'm a follower of his, I want to do what he does. So then Jesus was led Pretty cool that even Jesus was led. You know, he was fully God, fully man. He did take on some of our limitations when he came as, as a man. And he set the example, man. He prayed. He got alone with God the Father. And he was led. He was led by the Holy Spirit. That's, that's what we find out. So he was led by the Spirit, so he was in a place to hear from the Holy Spirit and to be led by him. And it, where was he led? Into the wilderness. Into, and in the Bible, in the New Testament, a lot of times when it says wilderness, it kind of implies a couple things. Sometimes it implies, it kind of emphasizes the loneliness aspect of it. It is just a place away from others. It also uh, implies the desolateness of it. It's not, he's not right in the middle of the city just chilling and hanging out at the coffee shop. He is out away from other things. And so the, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Why? Well, we know that God, had, uh, God was, was leading him, the Holy Spirit was directing him, and he wanted to accomplish some stuff in his life. One of the things that uh, we see in two places, Matthew and, and Luke, that it talks about this, he was led there, one of the reasons, to be tempted 
by the devil. God, God does not tempt anyone, but God led him to a place. He led him through a, a, a zone where, where he knew the devil was coming. And that's the same with us. God knows the devil is coming in, in, our, in our world, in our, in our life, and God leads us even through that. And, and he does not leave us or forsake us. So he was led to be tempted there by the devil. So now you and I, a lot of times we'll say, um, the devil is attacking me or the devil is here. And I don't know exactly how that works in the spiritual realm. Uh, I believe that the devil is, uh, is not omnipresent like God is. Uh, so we know that we, there's the devil and demons, his angels, they're out there w working. And so a lot of times we'll say, well, the devil did this or that. And we're referring to one of his workers. I believe in this instance, it was the devil. <laughs> like face to face with Jesus. For 40 days and 40 nights, Jesus fasted and he became very hungry. So... It's, it is like hour, you know, uh, five for me <laughs> or, or, or six of the fast. I'm already hungry, okay? Jesus was, was fasting for 40 days, and he had not eaten anything. He was very hungry. So this is the setting. We're, we're going to keep looking at this passage as we go along this morning. But the first meaning of you're in good company with Jesus when you fast is that he did it. When you do it, you're in good company because Jesus did that. But a second meaning, fasting puts you in good company with Jesus, is that when you fast, you're keeping company yeah. Yeah. with Jesus. Yeah. That, mean, that phrase means hanging out with, being in the, in, the, in the presence with, being together with Jesus. So fasting puts you in good company with Jesus because he did it. And also, he, fasting and praying Put you in his presence, put you in his company. It's it's physically setting aside this time to say, Jesus, I want to be with you. I want to be with you. We know God is everywhere, his spirit is everywhere, his spirit is in us. We know that, but we're we're talking about we want the manifest, tangible, obvious presence of Jesus in our lives. Amen. Does anybody else besides me want this? Yes. If you've ever experienced God's presence, you, you just, you want more. <laughs> you want more. So uh, we, we are pursuing his presence, and we're believing to experience his power in, the, in these days of, of praying and fasting. So three ways, three biblical ways in which fasting puts you in good company with Jesus. We're going to look at three ways. The first one is this. Fasting strengthens your self-discipline. Fasting strengthens your self-discipline. And we know from Galatians 5 that one of the fruit of the Spirit in your life is self-discipline, self-control. And fasting strengthens your self-discipline. So Jesus said no to food for 40 days. And he was able to say no to some very powerful temptations. Now, just picture it. Face to face with the devil himself, we picture him the way Hollywood pictures him, with a tail, a red cape, horns, and you know, collar sticking up, and little horns coming out, and a pitchfork. That is not the way the Bible portrays him. The Bible portrays him as someone who looks like an angel of light. He is he is a deceiver, and so I'm guessing that when Jesus came face to face with the devil, he looked attractive, strong, powerful. That's, that's, that's much more likely how the devil presented himself. Even if that's a deception, that's how he would present himself. And this, the devil had been studying Jesus. He's been like, okay, what's, what's, what's going on? What's, what's he been doing? Oh, I noticed the last 40 days he's not eaten. Let's, let's tempt him with food. And so that's what the devil does. Verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 3 in Matthew. During that time, so it's in the middle of a 40-day fast, or at the end, I think it's towards the end of the 40-day fast, the devil came and said to Jesus, if you are the Son of God, tell these stones, these rocks, to become loaves of bread. Wow, that's tempting. Like right now, I'm tempted to eat something, like right now. <laughs> Like I say, it's not even lunchtime yet where I'm at. <laughs> Jesus had, it's 40 days. Like that must have been very tempting. And the devil says, if, if, prove it to me, Jesus. Not sure I believe you're the son of God. 
So if you really are, then just say the word. Do a magic trick. Make these stones come to bread. But Jesus told him, no. Do you see that power that he had? No. In the midst of a very, very powerful tempting, it was tempting. That's why we call it temptation. It was tempting. Oh, that's tempting. Jesus said, no. The scriptures say, people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And you know what? Just like Jesus, if you can say no to food, you can say no to temptation. Saying no to food is practice for that. Like saying no to a very powerful urge to eat, if you can say no to that, you can say no to other areas of temptation. Okay, a second thing that that fasting does in your life. Fasting aligns your heart's affections with God's heart. Fasting aligns your heart's affections, your heart's desires and loves and wants with God's heart. Fasting aligns your heart with God's heart. Wow, that is beautiful. In verse 5, then the devil took Jesus to the holy city, Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple. Okay, so picture our church, the highest point of our church building. I don't know how far, that was maybe 30 feet high, something like that, three stories high, maybe at the highest peak, something like that. And the temple would be higher than that. And so the devil takes him up there and he says, if you are the son of God, jump off. And he's been studying Jesus. He's like, okay, we want to play the scripture game. Okay, Jesus, I can do that too. So he said, the scriptures say he will order his angels to protect you and they will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. The devil even quoted the word of God, to the word of God. Jesus is the word of God. Like, oh, wow. Okay, gutsy move there, devil. Jesus responded, the scriptures also say, which right there, I could stop right there. That is one of the top ways to interpret scripture well. Look at all of it. If you take little three little words, like if you're searching hard enough, I don't know if you've ever just done a search in a book, but if you say, I'm looking for these three words, it will show you like a little paragraph where the is here, apple is here, and fruit is down here. It doesn't even go together. But like if you're, if you can do that with the Bible, you can take it out of context. But what is this, what does all of scripture say about this topic? And that, that helps us stay out of danger so much. Jesus said the scriptures also say, you must not test the Lord your God. Just so, so see, there, uh, there is something tempting. This is a temptation. So the devil knew this is, there was something tempting about this to take Jesus up and say, throw, throw yourself off, jump off the roof, because if, you're, if you are who you say you are, the angels are going to pick you up anyway. Uh, and uh, just think of what that would do for you, Jesus, if that, if that happened. But Jesus loved his father. His heart affections were such for God that he would rather make his father famous than to make a name for himself by jumping off the temple, even jumping off the roof. In fasting, we're not just trying to get something from God. Fasting is not a greedy, grabby thing. More, what we're doing is we're not trying to twist God's arm. We're not just trying to get something from God. We are seeking to align our hearts and our lives our heart's affections with God's affections. We want his desires to become our desires because they're good. (laughs) It's better for us. Fasting helps you say, I love you, Lord, more than anything else, even food. Everybody pretty much loves food. Everybody needs it. We, We want it. We have certain preferences. But in fasting, we say, Father, setting that aside because you're even more important to me than that. Fasting helps you cleanse the temple of your heart from every other rival, every other idol, every other thing that your heart would go after. Fasting just sort of, it just like, just draws a line in the sand uh, where you say, God, it's you. You're first uh, first importance to me. 
This, this past Wednesday night, we had our prayer gathering, and I, I, I have been in fasting. I've, I've been in the fasting, prayer and fasting mindset since Wednesday. Like Wednesday, I just had the best times with God, and then Wednesday night, we had a great time at prayer gathering. This morning, oh my goodness, very powerful prayer gathering uh, where I, I, we usually in, in prayer gatherings, like I'll, I'll say, let's pray about this topic, let's pray about this topic, and usually like we all pray, but it dies down pretty quickly. Okay, today, like, we were going, like, wow, we, we're going to have to quit pretty soon because service is about to start. It's just so powerful to be together and pray about things that matter to God. So I've, I've been kind of, like, I'm getting a head start. on. I wasn't fasting necessarily all week, but I was just in that mindset of pressing into God's presence. And I have found him. Amen. He has been there. I have heard from God. And it's Oh, it's so great. That may, makes me really look forward to what's ahead in the next few weeks. And we, I, we, I talked about on Wednesday night at prayer gathering, Mary, the sister of Martha and Lazarus in the Bible. And every time we see Mary in the Bible, uh, there's three different times where the, the Bible talks about her. We, every time we see her, she's at Jesus' feet. It's, it's really unique and interesting. Like, I, I don't know that I had really noticed that before. Uh, she's always at Jesus' feet. And the, probably the most famous time is in Luke chapter 10, verses 39 to 40. It's written down that her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, at Jesus' feet, listening to what he taught. But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. So there's that, a really sharp contrast drawn there between these two people. Mary was not frenzied by food. She was focused on her friend. See what I did there? Four Fs. I think that's pretty good. She was not frenzied by food. She was focused on her friend, on Jesus. And sitting at Jesus' feet, I don't know if we, I've, I've ever really just noticed it this, this clearly. What was she doing? She wasn't just sitting there. In fact, none of the three times was she just sitting there. This time, it said she was sitting there listening to his word. Jesus was teaching. The word of God was there, present. And she was focused and she was listening to the word of God as she was sitting in his presence, sitting at Jesus' feet. And then Jesus defends her as a role model. There was a little argument there, a little tussle there in the family about who is doing what. And Jesus said, she nailed it. Everyone ought to be doing that. Sitting at Jesus' feet, listening to his word. That's how she knew what Jesus wanted, wanted her to do. So the other two times we see her, she's, she's, one time she fell at his feet, the other time she anointed his feet. It's, it is powerful what she learned by sitting at the feet of Jesus, she actually, her heart's affections changed to be what he would desire. And we know because there was a little argument and Jesus said, yep, that's what I desired. I just want her to be in my presence. And so this is a lesson that I learned from that. Knowing, so knowing God's will, knowing comes before doing. And sitting comes before knowing. Knowing comes before doing. Sitting comes before knowing. So, in other words, you got to know God's will before you're ever going to do it. Like, how are you going to obey God unless you know what he's asking for, what he wants, what pleases him? And how are you going to know unless you sit at his feet, unless you listen to his word, unless you spend time with him to have his heart rub off on you, interacting with his word in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, it says, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind that he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. And fasting is one way to give your body to God. I don't know if you've made that connection before, but fasting is a way you can give your body to God. And Paul says, I bleed with you. I beg you, please give your bodies to God as a living sacrifice. 
Verse 2, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you. Why is that such a big deal? It's because his will is good and pleasing and perfect. God does not impose a bunch of stuff on you to make you miserable. It's the opposite. He calls you to a life of living for him that is a little different than the life lived around you because it's the life that's best for you. It's the life that's best for me. It's good, pleasing, and perfect or complete. As you offer your body as a living sacrifice to God, you worship him alone. You line up your thinking with God's word and you begin to know God's will for you. And you begin to realize, oh, his will's not so bad. And then you begin to actually desire his will. Okay, Lord, it's not just like, oh, I got to do this because you told me to. It's like, oh, I want to do this. I, I see you love me. I see you want the best for me. Man, I want that too. Okay, yes. And your heart's desires, heart's affections change. Third thing that fasting does in your life. Fasting prepares you for spiritual battle. Mm -hmm. Fasting prepares you for spiritual battle. The devil tempted Jesus to break his fast by doing a trick and turning stones into bread. The devil tempted Jesus to bring glory to himself by jumping off the roof of the temple. And how did Jesus fight that temptation? With the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. It's our offensive weapon. Jesus fought and was able. He knew God's word. He had spent time with God's word. And he had it ready when he needed it. In, in uh, Matthew 4, verses 8 to 10, it says, Next, the devil took Jesus up to the peak of a very high mountain, and he showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. Okay, so just picture glorious kingdoms. Can you picture Buck- Buckingham Palace and Windsor Castle? That's a glorious kingdom. Can, can you picture all the other kingdoms? The, can you picture the Taj Mahal? Can you picture just all the kingdoms of this world? Can you picture the uh, financial kingdom of the United States? Can, can, you, can you picture all the kingdoms of this world? And their glory. They are glorious. The devil took him up there and he showed him all that. And I, I believe he probably showed him what's coming in the future. I don't know. I don't know if he had that power or not. The devil said, I will give it all to you if you will kneel down and worship me. So he's kind of changed his tactics again. What does Jesus say? Get out of here, Satan, Jesus told him. For the scriptures say you must worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And if the devil has a tail, I believe he walked away with it but tucked between his legs. (laughs) At that moment... The devil went away, and angels came and took care of Jesus. Wow. Wow. So the devil offered Jesus a shortcut. Um, You know the hallelujah chorus? The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. It's already decreed. The kingdoms of this world are Jesus's. All authority in heaven and earth will be given to him. And the devil offered a shortcut. He said, how about you get all that without the cross? How about you get all that without the suffering, without the obedience to God? That's tempting. It wouldn't be, if it wasn't tempting, it wasn't a temptation. That was tempting. Jesus had to go, that's tempting. But no, bye, Felicia. No. No. Fasting in the wilderness prepared Jesus for the biggest test later on. So he said no to the devil, and he said yes to God in the wilderness, in the fasting time. And that helped Jesus to say no to the devil and yes to God in the garden, the garden of Gethsemane, the night that he was betrayed. In Luke chapter 22, it says, Jesus prayed, Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. If you're willing, please don't let me have to go to the cross and be whipped and beaten. Please don't make me wear the crown of thorns. If if you're willing, Father, yet I want your will to be done, not mine. 
And we know Jesus did go, and he was beaten. He did out of a crown of thorns. He did hang on that cross for us. After that prayer, Jesus got up, and he let them take him away. He could have called 10,000 angels, but he let them take him away because he was going in obedience to the Father. So fasting puts you in good company with Jesus, doing what he did and being with him. Like Jesus experienced, fasting strengthens your self-discipline. Fasting aligns your heart affections with God's heart. And fasting prepares you for spiritual battle. I don't know about you. I want to have God's heart. <laughs> I want to be self-disciplined. And I want to be prepared for spiritual battle. We, we've experienced some uh, uh, in our church this past week. Like we, I, I, I want to be well prepared for that. I want to be wielding the, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, because I've spent time in prayer. Like I'm devoting extra time this at the start of this year. So I want to give you just a few practical tips. Practical tip number one, look at your journal. Because <laughs> there's a whole page of practical tips in there. And the, the, all the, the prayer and fasting resources from the journal are also on the app. So if you're not a paper person, it's right there. That's, it's, it's, it's that content is also on the app. There's actually a button, a special button now, 21 Days of Prayer and Fasting. So you click on that, it's all there. Um, ju just to, to note, if you are a pregnant or nursing mom, I would not recommend an intense fast for you. You need to keep a balanced diet for you and your baby, okay? Uh, so there are other ways to fast. The same thing with kids. Uh, we want to be careful with kids uh, how much food they give up, all right? So parents use cost and, cost, caution and wisdom through that. Uh, you could always fast entertainment in that case. Fasting is going without food for a spiritual purpose, but there are times that you, you just cannot fast physically. So that, that's okay. Fast something else then, if that's, if that's the case. Um, number two, and practical tips, set aside some quality time for conversation with God. Conversation, I use that word specifically, not just prayer. I, I, we should almost call it 21 days of prayer and conversation with God. Because conversation is listening you can't, if you're talking all the time, that's not a very good conversation. It's, it's listening, responding, replying, both people sharing. That's, that's conversation with God. So I, I want to encourage you to have at least a little time every day. Maybe that little time is on your commute. That's okay. Do that. Do, do it. Take what you got. Spend some time with God. But I also want to encourage you during this time of prayer and fasting, sometimes give God an hour. Maybe that only happens on Saturday afternoon for you. Oh, that's okay, great. Do, it, do what you can. But sometimes, if you can do it more often, that's one reason why we fast more. You could take every day at lunchtime from noon to one. If you have a lunch, uh, go sit in your car if you're in that kind of a job or go just close the door to your office. But give God some extended time. Jesus said in the garden, can't you even watch with me one hour? So sometimes, that's why we set aside food, so we can, we'll, that's where we find that hour. It's hard to find an hour, but I can find it if I don't eat. Does that make sense? Have some time that's a little bit more extended to pray, read your Bible, uh, devotion. In the journal also, there's a couple different tips in there, just how to journal. If you've never tried it before, try it during lunch one time this week. Let, let's listen. Let's, let's be engaged with God. Try, maybe try a different translation of the Bible. Just this year, do all your Bible reading in a, in a different translation than you usually use. So just do something that freshens and intensifies your seeking after God. Uh, here's, here's some books I could, I could recommend. Uh, all those things are first. Listening, prayer, Bible, all that's first. But if you have more time as you're praying and fasting, how about a book that, that draws you, a good Christian book that draws you closer to God? Here's a couple. Dallas Willard is one of my favorite authors. It's just it, as far as bringing me close to God. Two of his books, Hearing God and Renovation of the Heart. Oh, my goodness, so good. If you want to just read a, a, a book that will challenge you spiritually. Another one, Soul Keeping by Ortberg. Another one, Sacred Rhythms by Barton. Now, that's going to be a different flavor, very different flavor, a little bit more like monastery practices and different things like that. It, it would be, it'd be stretching, but she's got some really good experiences in there of just how to get alone with God. Really cool. So those are some suggestions for you. I encourage you also to put yourself in peaceful, I'm sorry, prayerful environments. 
to pursue the presence of God and experience his power. So like you're here right now, you're, you're here in this place or you're watching online, great. You put yourself in a good environment. That's awesome. Uh, we, there's some other ones that we have all the time, but they're even better during our, our 21 days of prayer and fasting. So uh, our, our, um, tonight we'll have, <coughs> excuse me, I've got a dry spot going. I'm going to have to do a quick... <clears throat> I'm okay, yes. It is, it's just mm, dry right there. Um, tonight is uh, a special gathering, and each Sunday night during the fast, we're going to do something different on those Sunday nights. Each, each of those will be a large group gathering, so it'll be all of us here in the worship center. Tonight, I'm so excited that we're starting with this, a night of worship. And we want to just chill in God's presence Take time to worship him, to talk with him, to listen to him. And it's just a, a little different setting. Just extend a time. We're in no hurry. If we do one song for 60 minutes, that's great. If we do uh, uh, several songs, if we spend some time at prayer, we're, we're, we want to come and just flow in the presence of God. It is going to be an awesome experience. Well, put yourself there. You, you might be thinking, well, I got I to gotta, I gotta buy my groceries, Sam. Well, can you buy them this afternoon instead so you can come back tonight? Because I don't want you to miss out. This is going to be a great time in God's presence. Every Wednesday night, but especially during the fast, we have a great prayer gathering right here and every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. We have a great prayer gathering. But I, I don't know how to explain it, but it's just even better during the fast. Because we're more focused. And when you're focused, that's when you experience God's presence and his power. All right? Uh, and the third thing, so uh, some practical tips. One, look at the practical, t- practical tips in the journal. Two, set aside some time for God. Number three, prepare for opposition and distraction. Because it's going to happen. It happened to Jesus. You're in good company. Jesus experienced it. So I bet tomorrow at the office, if, like if, for example, if you say, I'm going to do the Daniel fast. That's just uh, fruits and vegetables. Someone's bringing donuts tomorrow, I promise. And I don't mean just any donuts. I mean those glazed, cream-filled ones dipped in chocolate. I mean those donuts. Those are the best donuts. Please do not bring me one for 21 days. Day 22, bring it. Bring it on. Bring it on. Oh, my goodness. But you know, that's just a silly example of opposition. And dis- but it is distraction. A lot of times during the fast temptation rises, tension rises, and discouragement rises. That is the enemy working against you, trying to, give you, get, trying to get you to give up on pressing into God's presence. And by the way, if you, uh, if you fall to food, you know, you like you plan to fast and you just didn't even think about it. You just get up and had breakfast like always. I've done that. I've done that on a fasting day before. There's no condemnation. My goodness, just go for the next, go for the next time and just pray then. So, no, I'm good. Thank you. No condemnation. So why don't you stand to your feet, everybody. Jesus wants you to be in good company with him. So let's, let's press into his presence, all right? Let, let's pray. Would you pray with me? Jesus, we want to be in good company with you. Our heart has heard you say, come away and talk with me. And so, Lord, we say, we're coming. Yes, we want you, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that you would come and do great things in us and in our church during this season of seeking you. In Jesus' name, with your head still bowed, I I just want to invite you, if you have not yet put your faith in Jesus, then, man, start that relationship with Jesus today. Acknowledge that you're a sinner. Acknowledge that we're all sinners and that we need a Savior, Jesus. How How do you become a Christian? How do you put your faith in him? Turn away from your sin. Turn your life over to God and let him lead So we never close our service without giving you an opportunity to put your faith in Jesus. So whether you're online or in the room, if today is a day you want to put your faith in Jesus, you want to become a Christian today, would you just raise your hand? If you're in the room, I'll see it. If you're online, God will see it. 
right where, right where, right where you're at. And I'd love to just lead you in a prayer because I just never know what's going on in hearts. Would you repeat after me and pray to Jesus? Let's go. Jesus, Jesus. I invite you into my life. I acknowledge I'm a sinner and I need you. Please forgive me of my sin and make me new. I choose to follow you and be your apprentice starting now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And if you did that today, we say welcome. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Welcome to the family of God. One final thing that I want to do today is I want to give you an opportunity to be anointed with oil. So if, if you plan to fast any, like if you want to fast one meal, if you're, going to, if you're going to participate some way in the fast, Jesus said, when you fast, anoint your head with oil and wash your face. Don't try to look all sad and discouraged. Uh, so if you would like to be anointed with oil, we want to pray for you, and then we're going to pray for our church in general over the fast. All right? So Pastor Shelley and I will be up right up here. If you'd like to be anointed, why don't you come on up? And uh, uh, right now, we're just going to anoint you. We're not going to take a, a long time, like a long time of prayer or anything, but we want to just anoint you for the fast. So we're wrapping up in prayer. I'd love just to pray now over just our, our whole church and the fast, and then, and then we'll close out. Lord, I thank you so much for this opportunity to just set ourselves apart, consecrate ourselves, be anointed. And Lord, I pray for an anointing on our church to grow and blossom and flourish, Lord God. Lord, I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would move among us and in us and through us. I pray that this would be our most powerful time of praying and fasting ever. And Lord, I pray that it would set the tone for the coming year, that 2022 would be a year of increase, would be a year of power, would be an in, in, uh, a, a, a year of doing your work, your way, in your power, in your spirit, at your speed, in your ways, Lord God. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that in this time of prayer and fasting, that unity would rise in our church, Lord God, that we would hear from you, that we would, uh, that we would together be following Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Where do I? Do you start? Or, okay. So, as you go, we're, we're pretty much uh, wrapping up here. As you go, if you have a Connect card, would you be sure and drop it in the, the offering box at the back? Yes. Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> there she is. Okay, there we go. Um, don't forget to grab a journal in the lobby. They are free. Um, they are uh, for preparation for the 21 days of fasting. Um, and we also do have together nights tonight at six today. Yeah, and I hope you, I hope, hope you come back for that. It's going to be great. A time, a time of worship like I was talking about. That's awesome. Um, if you are online, be sure and subscribe so that other people can help, you know, helps other people find, find us. Yeah. Anything else for you? Um, that's it. We'll see you guys on Sunday. Okay, that's right. <laughs> see you next week. God bless you guys.